Hello ladies, I hope that your day is going well. In this video, I want to talk about character compatibility and avoiding the scarcity model. If you haven't already, please hit the like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. I have been seeing a variety of different videos advertised, not just on this platform, but in seeing different things that have popped up throughout the week in entertainment story. And, you know, there's two women that are in a situation with the same man. One of them is having a baby with him. The other one has come up, come out on Twitter with a litany of tweets talking about how she has been with this man for a while and did not know that he had a girlfriend, that she was pregnant. And at the end of this tweet storm, she says they're going to be sister wives, basically. Um, then we have a entertainer who now may or may not be dating a actor of another demographic who is 30 years older. So there's this whole discussion and buzz about that. Is she dating him? Is she trying to get the bag? What's going on here? Uh, there's a, a quasi policing tape taking place that generally tends to take place with black women, or in her case, she's multiracial, but she is generally seen as being part of the black woman collective. So there is this policing that I notice takes place whenever black women have an option that is unexpected, from, different from the norm that where she has dated or married in the past. And so something that really stands out to me is it so incredibly important that when we are looking at dating, when we are looking at being in a relationship, that we really keep character and compatibility at the forefront. It's so very, very important. When I think about the theme from the color purple, I believe that that played out a lot in the struggle love dynamic that we have seen, unfortunately, not in every case, but in enough cases. Over the last 50, 60 years, I've been engaged in struggle love, in the relationships that were, where you had to always pay 50-50, where there was always some sort of struggle involved, where there was poverty, trauma, drama, dysfunction, where you were expected to build a man like a Build-A-Bear workshop, and just these relationships that were certainly not reciprocal and were a great challenge, lots of issues. And a lot of what that was predicated upon was a scarcity model being promulgated, being promoted, being encouraged, and then replicated from one generation of to the next, where it's better to either share a man or have just a piece of a man, just to say you have a man because there is a male centricity going on. Women are encouraged to be male centered. And so you need to have a man or you need to have a piece of a man. You need to have a quasi relationship for you to have value and to be validated. And it's so important. And thank God that we are waking up and shaking off the struggle of and shifting from being engaged in relationships to the same extent, being engaged in relationships that are non-reciprocal and have a lot of trauma, drama, and dysfunction permeating them. But we have not crossed the finish line yet. Not, not all of us. There's still work to be done. There is still, there are still women who are caught up in this matrix. And it's nothing to look down upon them for because we want to have grace because all of us didn't always recognize our worth and our value and recognize the importance of breaking free from the stranglehold or the stronghold of struggle love. So it's very important that we recognize that everyone's not going to get there on the same day. But what we can do is we can start today. Even if we're starting today, that's an important start to break free from this very problematic and detrimental mindset and philosophy and paradigm that has really caused black women to stumble and be detoured for several decades. So it's important that we recognize the importance of us being valued and whatever the, the demographic the man is from, because for each one of us, it may be different, 
But what's important is that this is a man that values us, a man who is supportive of us, that's going to love us, that is going to be faithful and loyal. It's very important that we recognize what is his character and are we truly compatible in terms of not just a physical chemistry, but really values. What do we hold dear? What is our value system? What's important to us? And for us to be able to align with a man that has that character and has that integrity and believes in being monogamous and believes in being faithful, it's important that we have firm standards, boundaries, and criteria, and that we have an expectation of what we want in a relationship, what we will accept and what we won't, what we will not settle for. We know that there was a scarcity model that was being not explicitly, but implicitly, as well as explicitly promoted and encouraged during the last five to six decades where Black women were encouraged and expected. It was the status quo that you were going to go through struggle love for the most part. Not every woman, but certainly a lot. Struggle love. That was the expectation of the, or the 50-50 or the come up woman or the clean up woman and uh, being Barbara the Builder. So that was the expectation. You needed to have a man, any, any man, and whether or not this was a relationship that was beneficial, whether it was healthy, you just needed to have that relationship so like you could get this stamp of approval. And unfortunately, this was passed down from generation to generation. And it's very important that we recognize that this is still in operation so that we can break free from it and so that we don't engage in it and, that so, and so that we certainly don't continue to promote it and reinforce it and replicate it and pass it down because it has been so problematic for us as black women. We shouldn't be living and operating in any sort of spare scarcity model when it comes to men. Because when we are living in a scarcity model, when we're willing to accept anything in a relationship, that's what we're going to get. We're going to get anything in a relationship. And that's what has happened. And that is why we have faced a litany of issues, because if we don't have a firm standard, if we don't have a firm boundary, if we don't have criteria, if we're not vetting, if we're accepting just any old piece of a man or a sister wife situation, sharing a man, being the come up woman, being the fallback woman, being the clean up woman, if we're willing to accept that in a relationship, we are transmitting that. And then a man who's willing to and happy to engage in that sort of behavior, he knows that we're not going anywhere. He knows we don't have a standard. He knows that we clearly don't value ourselves. He knows that we do not recognize our worth. And he will exploit that, sadly, because his character and integrity isn't there. So we have to recognize our worth. We have to recognize our value. And we have to know that we don't need to settle for any old sort of relationship just to say we have a relationship. Because there are so many problems. There's so much baggage. There's so many liabilities that come when we settle for a relationship. And there are plenty of women that can tell you on the back end, I should have never went down that road. I should have stopped at the red flags done an abrupt halt and not proceeded with the relationship because it just hasn't been worth it. And it won't be worth it anytime we are compromising our standards and our boundaries and our criteria just to be in a relationship when we settle and when we compromise because we're driven by scarcity, we're driven by a fear of being alone and of a fear of not being picked. And so we allow a relationship to continue that never should have begun to start with important to shake free from that. Just because that is a model that was promoted in earlier generations don't mean that we have to continue with it. We can cut the cord, we can stop it today, whether we're 20, 40, or 60. We can refuse to accept and acquiesce to these low budget, highly toxic, dysfunctional relationships that have never benefited us as women. They're one-sided, they're not reciprocal, they're not healthy, they're not functional, and they actually impede our growth. They don't enhance us, rather they impede us. And so that is not a benefit. And so we have to do a mind shift. And for those women who aren't there yet, we can encourage them, but it's important for us to have our mind in a space where we understand we don't have to settle. We deserve better 
than the scarcity model and settling for these relationships that are very problematic and that do not help to optimize our life. We don't have to settle for that. And it's important for us to be aligning with other women, or even if it's one other woman that shares that mindset. We can encourage one another so that we are recognizing that we don't have to be how we were two years ago or two months ago or 20 years ago or how we saw another generation operate. Those women sadly did take on this mantra and this, they took on this behavior and they took on this mindset of scarcity and putting a relationship above their health and wellness and welfare and above their peace and above being in a healthy relationship. So in looking at compatibility, that is where we can take our time and vet so we can really find out, are we on the same page? Does this man have the same core values as me? Does he have the same work ethic as me? Does he view family the same way? Does he view relationships and marriage and monogamy? Does he view loyalty and faithfulness the same way I do? Or does he want to receive it, but he doesn't know how to give it? That's where the vetting process comes in, where we can truly see what is this man's character and is what he is saying what he's really walking out. Is that how he's really living? The Bible tells us you will know a tree by its fruit. So we have to really see what is his behavior, not just the words, but what's the actions looking like? Do his actions look like somebody who is emotionally stable and spiritually grounded and financially stable and is someone who has compassionate towards others and considerate of others' feelings? And is he someone who is reliable and responsible? Is he trustworthy? Is he honest? Does he have character and integrity or or has that been compromised? So that is where, as we get to know someone, if we even choose to, because we can be happily single, but if we're choosing today, we can take our time, see what the character looks like, see if we're truly compatible and recognize that we not only do not have to be rushed into a relationship via the love bombing, which we know never has a good end, but by taking our time and determining Is this a relationship that's going to enhance my life? Is this a man that I am truly supposed to be aligning with? Is this part part of God's purpose for me to be with him? Or is he a distraction? And recognizing our worth, knowing our value, and knowing that we don't have to operate in that scarcity model of just reaching out for any old man to say that we have a relationship, even though he is not someone who we should be aligning with, we do not truly have things in common, but rather that we are appreciated, that we are loved, that we are supported, that there is faithfulness, that there is honesty, that there is loyalty. Let me know what you think in the comments beneath the video. As always, be blessed, continue to level up, stay far away from the scarcity model because you deserve better.